welcome back to another reading with Mr White. Now, the bedroom may have changed a little bit, but the book has not. We are still reading The Nowhere Emporium by Ross McKenzie. We're on to chapter 30 today, and there's only 37 chapters, so we're nearly there. Before we start, let's just remind ourselves what happened last time. So in chapter 29, there was another flashback chapter. It was called Stolen, and it told us all about how um, <clears throat> Mr. Sh Mr. Silver had uh, fallen in love with uh, Vindictus Sharp's daughter, Michelle Sharp. Um, and he was showing her around the Emporium and showing, um, well, not his Emporium, his magical kind of shop uh, and all the magical things he could do. Um, and she gave him a drink, didn't she? And I think the drink made him fall asleep. And when he woke up, he searched in his pocket and the Book of Wonders was gone. I knew we couldn't trust that Michelle Sharp. Oh, she was a naughty one. Right, so let's find out what happened next. We're back in the kind of present day now. We're back in the Emporium where all sorts of things are going horribly wrong since Vindictus Sharp turned up. Um, it's chapter 30. It's called The Library of Souls. Let's go. <clears throat> High in the Emporium's twisting corridors, Daniel and Ellie stood before a doorway in the midnight brick. Cracks were crawling along the walls even as they arrived. The door swung open. Daniel felt a cool breath of air on his face and a familiar earthy scent lingered. The door led to a set of wooden steps. The steps opened to a vast cavern filled with calm black with a calm black lake. All around, huge shapes stood in the water, monstrous shadows reaching towards the ceiling that might have been miles above. A twinkle of light flickered somewhere in the gloom, then another and another. Gas lamps were glinting to life all around, blinking stars in the great darkness. <clears throat> the light was weak, but the darkness receded a little and the giants in the water were visible for the first time. They were bookcases. When he had walked the streets of Manhattan, Daniel had often thought the tall buildings resembled great canyons of concrete and glass. The bookcases in the library were as tall as many of those buildings. Some of them stood in regimented rows, linked by bridges and stairways. Others took more interesting forms, spirals, pyramids and irregular mountains erupting from the black mirrored surface. A city of books, Daniel thought. He stood with Ellie on a tiny island of wood, a platform no more than three metres square, black water lapping gently all around. Then far off in the water, Daniel saw the soft glow of a lamp floating towards them. The speck became the shape of a boat, and on the boat stood a tall, hooded figure in white robes. Why do you think the water's black? What do you think it could be? Hmm. Let me know in the comments below. <clears throat> the boat pulled up at the platform. The figure stepped from the boat onto the wooden floor. Welcome to the Library of Souls, it said in a whispering voice that seemed to come from everywhere at once. Daniel wondered if the books themselves were speaking, and he shivered. The voice continued, stories are precious, they are treasure, and the most precious story of all is that of life. Here, among these countless canals of ink high in the bookcases, you shall find the story of everyone who has ever lived, everyone who shall ever live, past, present and future, life and death. I will guide you to the tale that you seek. The figure said no more. Daniel spoke first. Um, we'd like to read the story of Vindictus Sharp, please. Behind the white hood, the figure gave a nod. It stepped onto the boat and motioned for them to follow. As the boat moved off, Daniel dipped a hand into the black liquid, rubbed it between his fingers. It really was ink. Did you think it was ink? I did. The boat moved between great mountains of books, beneath archways and tunnels carved through the bookcases. It's strange, isn't it? said Ellie, her curls blowing in the breeze as the boat coasted on. The story of everyone. Do you realise, Daniel? You could find your own book and read how you're going to die. Daniel swallowed. Um, uh, I think I'll leave that as a surprise. The boat docked in one of the narrow canals between two bookcases hundreds of metres tall. High above, several rope bridges crisscrossed. The hooded librarian led the way from the boat, hopping onto the wooden platform at the foot of the bookcase and up the first staircase. The climb was steep. Daniel's legs were burning. 
when the librarian called a halt at last. Where is he? asked Ellie anxiously. Where's Sharp's story? The librarian strode to the bookcase, reached out and pulled a very fat volume from the shelves. The, club, the cover was black leather and the pages leafed with gold. On the cover, serious looking golden letters spelled out Vindictus Sharp's name. The librarian reached out a hand and offered the book to Daniel. It was heavier than he thought it would be. He began to flip through the pages, but as he tried to read, it became obvious that something was very wrong. Words were moving on the page, disappearing and shifting and merging with other words. The whole book was a jumbled, wild tangle of letters. Oh, it doesn't make any sense, he said, handing the book back. What's wrong with it? <clears throat> the librarian looked through the book. A pause. This person has committed atrocities, it said. He has taken from others, stolen time. He has torn and warped his own life, his soul, so much that it has become unreadable. Oh, brilliant, said Daniel. We're stuffed. Uh, maybe not, said Ellie. Well, how do you mean? Ellie was half smiling. Well, this library has the story of everyone, right? Correct, said the librarian. So that means Papa is in here too. Daniel shook his head. Oh, Ellie, I think I know what you're thinking and it's not a good idea. Well, why not? If Papa's story's here, we can use it. But if we search for him, we could lead Sharp straight to him, said Daniel. He's hiding for a reason and we need to trust him. I almost got swallowed by a door full of bony hands last time I tried something like that. Do you remember that in that chapter? Oh, that was tense, wasn't it? I'm not talking about finding him, said Ellie. I'm talking about reading his life to see what it's all about. See what it says about Sharp. Daniel, Daniel smiled. I know, said Ellie, I'm a genius. I wouldn't go that far, said Daniel. Then he turned to li the librarian and said, could you take us to the story of Lucy and Silver, please? Mr Silver's story was not as long as Sharp's, which only proved to Daniel just how long Sharp's past stretched back. Remember, he's been stealing life from other people, hasn't he, to, to live forever, basically. When the librarian pulled it from a shelf in the remotest of bookcases and handed it to Ellie, she wasted no time in leafing through the, pe through the pages. How far do you think I should go? Papa's quite old. A great rumble filled the air. Several books fell from nearby bookcases. Um, Ellie, flip faster. Yeah, yeah, give me a sec. Another rumble and the sound of distant splashing. The ink was growing choppy. What's happening? asked Daniel. The librarian raised a hand. I don't know. And then the hand was gone and the librarian's robe, robe was filled only with black ink soaking into the white material. The empty robe crumpled, the ink splashing back on Daniel and Ellie who looked at each other with wide eyes. Oh, the library's falling apart, said Daniel. We need to get out now. When they climbed back on into the boats, the wind gathered pace, blowing stronger and stronger, whistling through the bookcase canyons, whipping the surface of the ink canal. The boat was tossed around like a toy. There were great groans and splashes from deep in the library. The boat bobbed in the swell as Daniel grabbed the oars and began to row. Then, as they hit the open water, the centre of the library, there was another rumble. Behind a great mountain of books was collapsing like a glacier into the ink. As the wave crashed into the surface, a tall black wave formed, tearing towards the boat. The boat was lifted high, carried faster and faster. Daniel held onto the side and linked arms with Ellie. And then the boat was upturned and everything was spinning and there was nothing but cold, wet blackness. Daniel's head broke the surface just as another wave crashed down on him and he was pushed deeper into the ink. He felt like his lungs were about to burst. He did not know which way was up. The ink was thicker than water and the weight of it seemed to be pushing and squeezing him. A desperate flailing of arms and legs and he was back on the surface, gasping and gulping the cold air. <gasps> Ellie! Daniel! Here! Over here! He followed the voice and spotted Ellie climbing up onto the wooden island that led back to the Emporium. Swimming against the tide was not easy. He knew at any minute he might be crushed like a bug by a falling bookcase. He tried to ignore the groans and creaks and at last he reached out an exhausted hand and grasped Ellie's arm. <gasps> he half climbed and was half pulled from the ink. 
to the doorway they fled, ducking as wild bucks tore through the air overhead. Then the door was open and they were falling into the cold emporium floor, scrambling up to push and push with everything they had against the door. As they fought the wind, a mountainous bookcase pounded into the water. A gigantic wave rose from the surface and swept towards the door. Daniel's eyes widened and he pushed harder. The door began to give, inching closed as the wave hurtled towards them. <laughs> the door slammed shut. The crashing wave roared against the closed doorway, making the entire emporium shake. Far away in the hall of staircases, several sets of stairs collapsed to rubble. Daniel and Ellie fell to their knees, panting, covered from head to foot in ink. <sighs> oh, I lost Papa's life story, said Ellie. <sighs> well, at least we're alive, said Daniel. He reached into his coat pocket and pulled out the Book of Wonders. Though he was soaked through and his skin and clothes were stained with black ink, the book looked somehow untouched. <sighs> I guess it's back to the drawing board. I just wish someone would help us, someone who really knows every part of the Emporium. He opened the Book of Wonders at a random page and skimmed the contents. After a few pages of nothing particularly helpful, a familiar chattering interrupted the silence. A flash of silver. The surviving magpie hurtled towards Daniel. He ducked his head as it swooped, knocking the book from its hands. Oi! The bird paid him no attention. It landed on the open pages of the book and sat as if it was incubating a clutch of eggs. Oh, away you go, said Daniel. With a half-hearted wave, he dislodged the bird. It hopped to the side of the book and twitched its head towards the open page, then fixed Daniel with a ruby stare. He gazed past the bird to the page and narrowed his eyes. Then he picked up the book and read. After a moment, he smiled a small smile. He stroked the magpie's head. Clever girl, he said. Thank you. Then he turned to Ellie, who had been watching with bemusement and said, I know where we have to go next. Ooh, and that's the end of that chapter. That was really dramatic, wasn't it? You know, I've said it so many times, but I can really see this book being turned into a film. And that scene in particular, of all those bookshelves falling down and crashing into that inky water and waves come in and Daniel falling into the water. Oh, that'd be amazing. And that strange hooded figure, who he would be, he would be good in the, um, in the film, wouldn't he? Quite creepy, I think. Right, so, appears the magpies have helped Daniel, doesn't it? Again, or the, the magpie, there's only one left, isn't there? Um, to find out what happens next, you're gonna have to join me next time. It's chapter 31 and it's called Memorial. See you next time, bye-bye. <laughs>